Good morning. morning. My subject this morning is why missions. And I want to show you... Where's Fred gone? I want to show you part of a DVD. Some of you will have seen it, if we can get it up there. Uh, It's part of the Transformation series. And this is what took place in, I think, in the far north of Alaska, among the Inuit Indians. Put the volume up, please. That happened some years ago. But it's happening today on a greater scale than what it did years ago. The latest stats last week were that the persecution of Christians has gone up 10,000% this year. That Christian men and women and children in the Middle East, in Africa, in Canada and other countries are being consistently raped and brutalized. In Australia, we lose six people to suicide just in Australia every week. In fact, it's the greatest killer now in Australia, and most of those are young people. So my question, or my heading this morning is why missions? And my question is why not? Dave eloquently spoke this morning about um, coming to the kingdom and, you know, and, and coming to worship and so on and so forth. But all the teachings I've heard from Paul is to take the kingdom to the world. And it's, it's fine for us to worship on a Sunday morning. But when I listened to Mike last week, and heard what Mike had to say. You see, I need to tell you that earlier this year I made a decision. In fact, I asked Daniel and Paul to take me off the preaching roster because I felt that I needed to step aside and let some of these young people experience ministry and go on to greater things. I decided that I was not going overseas again. I just don't like the travel anymore. But when I heard Mike last week, and then when I heard Olivia, Olivia deeply touched my heart. I had to ask myself, did I have a right to sit down? Did I, could I possibly say with all conscience, I've done my bit, let somebody else have a go. And so I left here last Sunday in tears. I went and sat in my car for a while and talked to God and, and God started to turn my heart back again to the islands. And I said, oh God, it's so hot up there and I just, you know... Every time I get on an airplane, it's the farthest gate in the blasted hemisphere. (laughs) I got to walk kilometers dragging some luggage to get there and then hustled and bustled trying to get on a plane. Don't want to do it, Lord. Just don't want to do it anymore. But you know, when God gets hold of life, he just won't let you go. You can have all your hums and ahs and your ups and downs and you can let circumstances pull you apart and all these things happen to us, to every one of us. But God finally has his way. And so I said, okay, God, I'll give it another year. And, uh, but I need a fresh call and a fresh anointing. I need someone to ring me. So the next morning I received a telephone call from New Guinea asking me to come 
to New Guinea. <laughs> and I said, God, I really didn't mean that quickly. <laughs> you know, can't I, can't I have a break? And then when Gary asked me this morning, he said, uh, what are you, 80, 84 or something? I thought, Gary? I'm just a very young 60 plus. So I am challenged. The more I hear, look, I don't want to embarrass you at all, but here's a housewife, a mother, a homemaker, works two or three days a week, that God speaks to about breaking a heart for what breaks his. We have someone like Mike. I don't know of anyone in this room that would, could honestly say they're more busier than Mike is. Yet he talked about the three things that God crushed his heart with. And in business, there are the three W's, the what, the why, the where. Let's bring that into the church. The church is not a business, but let's bring those three W's into the church. The what, what have we got to share? You've got your salvation. How selfish are we when we keep all this to ourselves and we don't take it out into the greater world? Every single time you walk out of your home, you're on a mission. There is no mission going other than you stepping out of your home. Your mission might be your work, it might be your school, it might be the uni, it might be wherever you happen to be that you're meeting people. And I want to tell you from personal experience that Jesus, when he said, I will build my church, and the church that I build, no satanic power will ever stop it. And we hear over and over and over these things, and yet every single day we pass people whose hearts have been prepared by God to come into the kingdom. The, when Jesus spoke about the harvest, what he was really talking about was the harvest that has been prepared, not the harvest that is being prepared, the one that, he, didn't he say the fields are white with harvest? Not the fields are going to be white. So my challenge is, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit back and let a housewife or a very busy school principal do all the work and pat them on the back? And, or am I going to get involved? Well, I made my decision last Sunday when I went to Olivia and said, please, can I be involved with you? Why missions? Because we have a mandate from God, yes. not from anyone else, a mandate from God to take the gospel to all the world. Yes. We used to sing a song years ago. Some of you, my vintage, might remember it, but it's forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. And how do we worship him? Is song the only way that we're going to worship him? Or are we going to be involved? I don't go to football matches. But if there's a crowd of 50,000 watching the Crows play, fancy having a name called Crow. But anyway... If, if there's 50,000 watching these guys in tight shorts kick a bag of wind around, every single one of them 
is an umpire, a referee, a greater exponent of the game than those idiots running around getting cold or wet in the mud. Let's not be a church of spectators, but let us be a church of participators, of people who are crushed in our heart about what God is crushed about. The purpose for your life is to be a witness. The word witness comes from the Greek word masus, which means a martyr. That the sole purpose of our existence is to become a martyr for Jesus Christ. I have a friend in India that in their organization, 100 ministers last year were martyred for Christ. I'm trying to provoke you. I'm trying to get you mad. I want you to get angry at the devil and what he's ripping off God's creation for. Because if you don't see it, you won't get involved. See, when I read the book of Acts, where Jesus said, be my witnesses, go into Jerusalem. Well, our Jerusalem is where our church is planted. It's Salisbury. And then going to go to, where was it? Judea. Yep. Our Judea is Adelaide. But my years of experience have taught me this. A bi-monthly meeting in Adelaide is not going to win Adelaide for Christ. It will win some souls, but it will not win Adelaide. What wins Adelaide is one-on-one, -on -one, one at a time, People who are determined to change their life for the betterment of someone else's life. The greatest single miracle is the born again experience. There is no greater miracle. We see the greatest manifestation of God in the church through the miracles of healing and deliverance and so on. But when you look at the new the experience of the new life of being born again, transformed, utterly and totally changed, yeah. delivered to be like him, and then given the greatest power the earth has ever known, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, to take that authority, that, that power, and that hunger, that desire, that someone else might live like you. Do I want to go on missions? No. I'll be honest with you, I don't. But one of my most wonderful times I have is going shopping with my wife. Now, I absolutely hate shopping. I just don't like it. Because I always come home with less money than what I want. And I'd rather give my money to the kingdom. But we have to eat, and my wife loves shopping, and she loves reading all the labels. And so that gives me plenty of time to sit on a bench and say, God, there must be a heart in here today that you have prepared for your kingdom. Father, can I have a divine appointment today? Will you bring someone to talk to me? And open up the conversation about you. Last week I had the privilege of praying with a lady who had a wonky knee. She said she had a wonky knee. So I prayed with her because she couldn't push a trolley and, and then she took off and came back with a full trolley load. Walking perfectly. The audacity, the, the hunger, the desire to see someone else changed into what you have should be paramount in all our lives. Because it's not just Jerusalem and it's not just Judea. It's some area. The Bible says some area. 
but I'm challenging you to find some area this week to speak to someone about the gospel. Not to get them into church. Uh, that's not what I'm about. It's about getting them into the kingdom so their life can be changed. Let me tell you a little story. I was sitting home one day having lunch and I was about to bite into my sandwich when there was a knock on my door. And a guy, I went to the door and this guy's standing there and he's in tears, a young man in his early 20s. And he's crying and he says to me, is this where God lives? And I said, yes, come in. And so I invited him in and he told me who he was and then he told me that he had been driving down our street looking for the biggest stoby pole to run into to crash his car and commit suicide. And he said, I heard this voice that spoke to me and said, Go here, go into this house. This is where you'll find God. And I led him to the Lord and he got wonderfully delivered and set free. And, and that was Saturday and lunchtime and Monday, Sunday. He brought 17 of his relatives to church Sunday morning. They all got saved. And I baptized the whole lot of them in the sea that afternoon. Now, I didn't do anything but be who I was called to be. Just to be there, to be able to facilitate the changing of a life which ended up in changing 18 lives that weekend. Now, I can tell you many, many stories like that where God has just supernaturally brought people. In fact, when I first became a pastor, in the first six months, 72 people walked into the church, unchurched people, and surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. But you have to be willing to go, because that was the commandment. The commandment wasn't to say, be educated, be brilliant, be a theologian. The commandment was go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. In fact, Jesus himself said the only message really we were supposed to preach was the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that that message alone would bring the people into the kingdom. That's so my challenge, for me my challenge is am I too old to get off my beanbag and go out into the world and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? We talk a lot about things like impartation and all those things. What good is an impartation unless you use it? Fred, are you ready to give me a little bit more of that video? My own brother, my youngest brother, because he couldn't find anyone to talk to, went and hung himself just recently. The effort to get Turner to a hospital made When he spoke to my older brother, soldiers parachuted my older brother said, I'm too busy. This was Friday. I'll come round Monday. When he went round Monday, my brother was dead. It hits home. My brother, who hung himself, was not a Christian. Thank you, Fred. I can't watch that without. It brings me to tears. Things were so bad in those communities that the caribou stopped coming. The fish disappeared out of the streams. The berries that they used to gather 
to keep them through the winter didn't come to pass. Because of the de degradation and the terrible conditions, it seemed like everything had deserted them, even their food. Until these things happened, the caribou came back, the fish came back into the streams, and the berries grew again on the mountainside. We, you and I, are all that stand between total hell and damnation for our areas. God requires us to carry the gospel. Yes. Not just to the nations, but to our local areas. And my question this morning is, I've told you what I'm doing, but my question is, what are you going to do? Why missions? Why not? I mean, we're doing, we're doing things. We're going overseas and so on and so forth. But you don't have to cross the sea to be a missionary. You have to see the cross. And if you see the cross, it'll change your life. Because it was at the cross the greatest life that ever lived was given for you and me and for everyone out there since the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I can turn on your emotions and I can get you excited but none of that's going to work if tomorrow you're no different than you are today. I'm serious. We have in these earthen vessels the hope of the world it lives within us. And the commandment was not will you go, but go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now I'm going to ask you a question. And the question is, is there anyone here that has a family member that is not saved? All those that have someone that they care about who is not saved would just stand. Dan preached on Sunday night, on Wednesday night, sorry, from Romans. That the whole of creation groans. I want to, did you play any of that YouTube video on the groaning? Dan and I watched a portion of this video. The groaning, the, the earth, the world is groaning. Is that not correct? If you want to see this and hear it, then you need to go to that website. Okay, search Earth Groaning in YouTube. <laughs> search Earth Groaning in YouTube and listen to the sounds and what's happening. Now the very person or persons that you have stood for, that's your Jerusalem. That's where you should start. Because if you truly love them, you have a right to tell them. A command from the king to tell them about Jesus Christ. Whether they accept or not is not your problem. Your problem is to sow the seed. And so, you know, I've done this with my family. My family said, we have a right to be there, we're British. I said, no one has a right to be there unless they're drawn by the Holy Spirit through Christ to the Master himself. So I want to pray with you to give you the boldness of Acts chapter 4 
that, that you will be shaken, not just the building, but you will be shaken with the hunger and the desire to tell the people that you care about that they need Jesus Christ. So, Father, you see every heart. You know every thought. Lord, you know the ones we love and the ones we care about, the ones that don't know you. And, Father, we hunger. We truly hunger for our loved ones to come to know you like we know you. And Father, by faith, we just throw a net out. We want to fish on the other side of the boat, Lord, not on the side we've been fishing on. And so we throw out our net to all the loved ones that we stand here representing. And Father, we, we pray that you will give us a draft of fish, Lord, like you did to the disciples in Galilee. That, Lord, we will be able to draw in our loved ones, the ones, our friends, family, the ones we care about. Father, this would be the start of the revival that we've been watching, Father. Because we know our loved ones live in sin. And we know, Father, that unless they are born again, they will face the terror of Hades and be terrorized for the whole of their, life, their eternity. God forbid, Father, that we would stand aside and let our loved ones be tormented because we haven't got the courage to go and speak to them about you. Father, only you can water the seeds that we plant. But let us be plows and planters, Father, of your kingdom, that we would plow the hearts that you've prepared and bring in a harvest that is already prepared by you. Father, challenge us deeply, Father. Lord, I pray that like Mike spoke about and like Olivia spoke, that you would truly break our hearts for what breaks yours, Father. Lord God. Lord God, stir us. Please, Holy Spirit, don't let us go back to what we were yesterday. But let us go forward with a great old hymn ringing through us, Father onward, Christian soldiers marching into battle, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the works I do are not my works, they are my Father's works. He also said, the works that I do, greater works than these, will you do, because I go to the Father. He also said that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go in my name. Go in my name. In my authority, my character, my anointing. You and I have the same anointing that Jesus Christ carried while he was on this earth to continue the work that he's called us to do. God bless you and thank you.